Hello everybody, and welcome to what's a rather strange video. Um, I'm going to be doing like a tier list of every combatant on Death Battle as of the time of recording this video, uh, of which the latest announced episode has been Star vs. Steven, which um, probably the next time has been announced by the time this video has come out. Maybe, and I will tell you where I rank whoever it is in the comments. Um, so obviously... This is a very opinion-based video. I'm going to be talking about how I feel about a bunch of characters. Not every character I like, not every character I dislike. But we're just going to have to go... Have a, I'm just going to have to see um, who goes where. Uh, my internet's been really shitty today. Um, so, if something happens, uh, and this video isn't made, then well, I guess it doesn't matter, because you guys will know if it's gone well, because it'll be on the channel. Uh, this tier list was made by Red Runner, who is a proper good bloke, and you can... I'll link to his stuff, and I do that a lot. I've never actually even had a voice chat with him, or, like, been in a prediction with him, but I've linked to his stuff multiple times. It's bloody weird, isn't it? But, um, this is his tier list, so... Yeah. As you can see, my tiers are S tier, which are excellent characters who I have a personal connection with, a tier are characters who are just excellent, I just think they're really good, but I don't have any sort of personal connection. B tier is a very good character, but not an excellent one. C tier is just good. D tier is meh. F tier are characters that I just don't like. And then there's the I don't know tier, which is characters that I'm just not familiar enough with. And real people who I, I don't feel comfortable ranking like a real person. How, how good is this real person compared to fictional? I, I don't know. That's not something I can compare. So... Starting with Boba Fett. Now, Boba Fett as a character, there's not really much to him. Um, obviously, it's probably more in Legends, um, but I've not read like any of the stuff in Legends that has like a strong focus on Boba Fett, so I don't know him terribly well. Uh, a lot of the hype for Boba Fett comes just from his design. Uh, and obviously, nowadays, that's sort of less of a factor, because his, he's just a Mandalorian in terms of design. Um, but for a character, I'd say... Uh, mm, good. Look, Boba Fett's cool, but he's not really much of a character. In terms of Star Wars characters, he, he's not, not great. Um, he's mostly riding on the design, to be honest. And, like, in, in, the, film, it's in the films itself... In the, uh, itself. in the films themselves, he doesn't do shit. Um, he does more in the prequels than the sequels, if I'm being honest. Um, but that's because, like, in the original... No, of course not. In the, he's not in the sequels. He did more in the prequels than the originals. Be and, and because in the originals, he just sort of, you know... You know, he just doesn't do much. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Boba Fett, he's a good character. Like, I, I like him, but he's not a character I particularly care about. Samus. Now, for Metroid, I've only played uh, Metroid Zero Mission, Metroid Fusion, and Super Metroid, which I didn't finish. Um, not because it was bad, just didn't get around to it. Um, Samus as a character is also not one that I particularly care about. Um, but I, in those games, the focus isn't on her character. Um, and like, you can say the same with Boba Fett, but... You know, it's different, because he's a side character. Um... She's a main character. She's the main character. But also, like, like she, her character is barely brought up outside of um, Other M, which, you know, if we're ranking based on Other M, uh, very simple placement. But it's more than that, because um, obviously she's got character in the manga, I think. But I haven't read the manga. So I'm just going to put Samus in... Uh, I'm going to put her in very good... Mm, I'm going to put her in very good just because... I've actually played the Metroid games, and uh, playing a character gets you more connected to them than just watching them on the screen, unless they're really, really good. Um, Character-wise, they're about equal, Samus and Boba, but I just prefer Samus because I've played the game and I care about her. Akuma. Now, Akuma is a character that I really like. Um, he doesn't have much going on. Um, like, with Akuma, he's a character who's already finished his character arc, like, before the series begun. He's already completed his arc into becoming Akuma. 
and most of what you get out of Akuma is his interactions with Ryu, and, um, I don't want to say Goken, but I don't, I don't actually remember if they ever interact on screen outside of the Assassin's Fist miniseries, where Akuma does have a character arc, and it's actually really well done. I actually really liked Akuma in the Assassin's Fist miniseries, but in the games, he's not got much going on for a character, but I think he carries it with his presence, because, like, Akuma's the guy that does all those ridiculous, larger-than-life feats. Uh, I mean, Oro does a few too, I think, but Akuma's the one who's most known for them, and he gives Street Fighter that sense of scale. I think what makes Akuma work for me is that when he shows up, everyone's silent. That's it. You're fucked. Kiss your ass goodbye. Um, and I gotta I got put him in A. I gotta put Akuma in A tier. Uh, I don't have a personal connection with him, but I do really like Akuma. He does bring a lot of presence with just being there. Um... Yeah. As for Shang Tsung, he is also getting an A. Because Shang Tsung is my favorite antagonist in Mortal Kombat. Just like Kakuma is my favorite antagonist in Street Fighter. Um, it used to be Shao Kahn for Mortal Kombat, but then, like, with the modern stuff, he's a moron in MK9, he's an idiot in MK11, and in MK Aftermath, the only time he gets to actually do anything and be a threat, he gets psyched out by Shang Tsung. Um, and of course, like, Shang Tsung, I, I think a lot of what I like him from is the first movie, where um, he's just one of, probably my favorite video game movie villain. Uh, oh, but there, oh, there is Jim Carrey's Eggman. Between those two, but just amazing, amazing um, performance in that film. Just, he's so evil. I really like Shang Tsung, and I wish he got to do more, which he got to in Aftermath, and that made me happy. Rogue... Uh, Look, I didn't watch much of the X-Men cartoon. I don't want to watch any of the other stuff with Rogue, honestly. And in the movies, she's just sort of... Meh. I, I don't... She, Rogue is... Who cares? Wonder Woman is interesting. Um, I do like her. I gotta put her in C tier at least, because I do at least like Wonder Woman. Um, she's probably got a lot going on for a character... But I just don't remember anything. So, why, where, where do I rank Wonder Woman? I don't know, I'm just gonna... St I think I could just leave her in C tier. Like, she's good, but she doesn't like... Oh, character sticks with me. Goomba and Koopa... They're not characters. I gotta put them in meh. Because they're not characters. They are just... Members of a species, which I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to deal with that with the Pokemon later. So, you know, what? okay. Um, Goombas, I am there, and Koopa Troopers, I like because Koopa Troopers have a lot more personality. Um, yeah, and Vows is a Koopa Trooper, and you're gonna see him get ranked quite highly later. Uh, Mike Hagar, unfortunately, I don't know. I don't know Hagar very well. I mean, I, I know every character, the only character. I didn't know before they were announced in Death Battle was Bucky O'Hare. Everyone else I knew. Um, Hagar, though, never played a, I think, Final Fight. I never played a Final Fight game, uh, so I don't think I could fairly rank Hagar. Zangief is good. Zangief's good. He's entertaining. He's got a lot of character, but that's about it. The Ninja Turtles are weird, right? Because they've never actually used... A version of the turtles that exists um because they, they do a soft composite right which means i can't rank these based on the version of the turtles i know because it's not them it's not the 87 turtles it's not 2003 it's not 2012 it's not rise obviously given most of these guys weren't rise wasn't a thing when most of these guys were um used in death battle and it's not like a comic version it's just this version that doesn't actually i got <sighs> look if it was the versions I'm used to, they would rank really high, but I'm just going to put them in Don't Know, because I don't know these characters. It's a composite that doesn't exist, and I would the only media where the versions of Turtles they used exist is the Death Battles, where they don't really have much personality. And i got to put Zitz there too, because while I do know him, I don't care about him. And like, I, okay, if people want to know where I would rank the Turtles, if it was 2003, Raphael would be in A, Leonardo would be in A, Michelangelo would be in B, and Donatello would be in B. 
Um, I can't... I, I, I know some people just rank overall. I just can't do that, because if I rank, like, based on an overall composite, like, they those characters don't exist. And if it was just based on the most common kept traits, they would all be in meh. Because it's literally just Leonardo is leader guy. Donatello is just smart guy. Michelangelo is just the dumb one who makes smart ass comments. And Raphael's the mean one. There's no personality there. And the very specific things I like about them, like Raphael's inferiority complexes that get in the way of his ability to improve, aren't in every version. Leonardo's incredible amounts of self-doubt and his 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 honest his growing anger that he developed over his failures isn't in every version. Donatello's incredible dorkiness isn't in every version. Michelangelo, I mean, he's probably the most consistent. He is Michelangelo and Donatello are the most consistent across their versions. Um, but the only consistent character trait across pretty much every one is just. Leader, mean, smart, and dumb. So, I can't rank them, because those, those characters don't exist. Riptor... Never played a Killer Instinct. I mean, I've played Killer Instinct, but I've never, like, got into it. So, don't really know Riptor very well. Yoshi... Nah. I like Yoshi, but I, that's it. I just like Yoshi. Never played Darkstalkers. Um, so, I don't know Felicia. Taukaka... Taukaka... Mmm... Good. Kaka's fun, but she's not much of a character. Kratos, um... It, this is... Uh, he'd go in, like, D tier, or F, if it was just, like... He's angry, because, like, Kratos is a fucking idiot in the original games, and he's really stupid. Um, I do like new Kratos, though I think he almost goes too far the other direction. I'm going to put Kratos in B tier, because I do like Kratos. Um, Spawn is... Oh, uh, it's... I don't know where to rank Spawn. I've watched some of the cartoon. I've read a couple comics, but I've not, like, gotten into the... Ca I'm going to put him in B tier as well. Because Spawn, Spawn rides a lot on just how cool he is. But I don't really know Spawn well enough to put him in A. I know him enough to not put him in Don't Know. Bomberman. Never played a Bomberman game. Dig Dug doesn't even have a character, really, to my knowledge. Shadow. Oh, boy. Ranking Sonic characters. Um, I'm going to Shadow and B. I like Shadow. But... I liked him in Sonic Adventure 2. And I didn't dislike him that much in Heroes. He's awful in his own game. But then that game is bad anyway. And he's got nothing after that like nothing after shadow the hedgehog and sonic 06 really has shadow and he's bad in both of those but everything is bad in both of those games so it's not really fair <laughs> um there's like it's not fair to base silver solely off of sonic 06 but shadow i mean in the first two games he was in he's good and otherwise he's either been in a thing where everything is bad anyway or he's just had nothing going on vegeta is an a vegeta is my favorite character in Dragon Ball, debatably. There are two others in Dragon Ball who come close, and they've both been on Death Battle, and they're going to probably rank in the same tier. Um, I just, I always liked Vegeta. Um, his arc's good, his writing's good. I just, the main thing I wish that with Vegeta was his sacrifice against Majin Buu actually meant something to his, to like, you know, make sure his, his arc didn't feel pointless, which it kind of does. Mario is a big fat man. <laughs> He's got no personality. Uh, I mean, he's got a personality, right? He's he's happy-go-lucky. He's he's he's. Oh God, that's yeah. Okay. Um, so Sonic, right? Uh, see, Sonic's good. I do prefer Shadow, but Sonic is good. Um, I prefer him to Mario, but I probably prefer most Mario's games. But then I, the high points of Sonic, I prefer over the high points of Mario. But Mario is more consistently good. I don't know. Bieber, Black, not gonna rank him. The Death Battle t-shirt. It's not a real person, but I'm gonna put it there because it's a real thing. Every other t-shirt in the world, I think this is supposed to be. Boop. Harry Potter. Now, in the Harry Potter series, Harry's never been my favorite character. I personally think Snape's probably my favorite. Um, but Harry's just, you know... Was alright. 
He's a good character, but I don't care about him. Luke is an A. Um, Luke's great. I've always liked Luke as a character. Um, wish he had a good matchup. Um, Harry, Harry's probably one of his better ones in terms of like a legacy battle, but it's also a bad matchup. Um, but I like Luke. I think he's a good character. I think his arc's great. I think he's just... I really like Luke, especially because this is Legends Luke who actually got to do stuff after Return of the Jedi. It's good. Chun-Li is one of my most liked Street Fighter characters. Um, I just like her. She's in the same tier as Samus, and it's probably just, like, for the same reasons. You know, she's cool. She's... She's got a really good design. I like Chun-Li. Like, not, like, the overly sexualized ones, where she's, like, in a bikini. But I just like the the classic blue design for Chun-Li. I like that a lot. And she's fun to play. And, yeah. I mean, she's not got much of a character. I say that a lot, but she's got enough to be good. Um, never played Fatal Fury, so I can't actually rank my... Um... Yeah. Rainbow Dash, never watch My Little Pony. Starscream is going to be our first S tier. Now, you're going to... I'm pretty sure the Transformers character is all going to get an S tier, but Starscream is just the most fun motherfucker. There is, like, a similar problem with the Turtles, with the way they do Transformers, where they're making up a version that doesn't exist by just combining all these other characters who have no relation to each other beyond being a version of Primax Starscream. But I actually know... Most of the versions of Primax Star... I know most of the versions of Starscream generally, so I can say that if this was based on the G1 cartoon, he'd be an S, because he's one of the few characters in the G1 cartoon with a, like, a really defined personality and things going on. If this was based on the Marvel comic, he's fine. Um, actually, he's probably even better than the cartoon, because you, you can see what he's thinking. You can get an idea of his character. RDW Starscream's really good. Probably say the only bad version of G1 Starscream off the top of my head is from the Prime Wars trilogy. Uh, he's not got much going on in, like, War of the Cybertron trilogy, but at least he's not, like, like, a directly contradictory... In the, in the fucking Combiner Wars and, the, like, the Prime Wars trilogy, he's a contradictory character, because he monologues to himself that he's changed, and then, ha <laughs> nope! Um, and, like, that version of Starscream is bad. That version would be an F tier, but all the others combined, still an S tier. I think they're all S tiers, and if you go beyond just G1... Amada Starscream's an S tier, fucking great character. Energon's an F tier, no personality. Cybertron is probably an A tier, he's still very good. Movies is an F tier. Um, Prime is an S tier, he's a lot of fun in that series. RID 2015, he does get to be cool as well. Uh, and I, I actually quite like the design. Cyberverse Starscream's great, uh, he's a lot of fun, and I love that he's got his own distinct design, and I love the deluxe class figure they made of that version of Starscream. Um... And, of course, Starscream's appearance in Beast Wars, he was great in that episode. I loved it. Um, so, yeah. Even soft composited, I know enough Starscreams to be able to confidently rank him. As for Doom Guy, uh, Man, I gotta put him in B tier. For the same reason as Samus, and the same reason as Kratos, and the same reason as Spawn, he's not got much going on. Well, okay, that doesn't count for Spawn. The same reason as Samus and Kratos. He's not got much going on. God, is he cool. Um, yeah, that's it. And you know what? Chief's got to go on the same ranking. I think Chief's great as well. I, I like Chief quite a bit. Eggman, you get an A, my man. You're a very fun, very entertaining, very likable villain. I don't have a personal connection to Sonic, but I think Eggman is great. I love Eggman. He's one of my favorite characters from the Sonic series. Arguably my favorite. Just a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Dr. Wily. Now, I have played a couple of the classic series games. Wily's... he's good. He's very good. I think he's quite a fun villain, but that's about where it ends. Peach... <laughs> she's got no personality. I'm gonna put her in Meh, honestly. Um, she's okay. And honestly, Zelda... Um... I like Zelda in Skyward Sword, which I haven't played, but I've watched the cutscenes. And I like her in Breath of the Wild, which I haven't played, but I've watched some of the cutscenes. Um, but every other game that I've seen her in, no personality. Raiden, from Mortal Kombat. Now, uh... Good. I think with what they've done in the modern era, where they've turned Raiden to a massive idiot, he's just, just good. 
because he's what is it Patrick Seitz no oh, who does the voice of Raiden Richard Epcar that's the one Richard Epcar does a great job I also like the voice for Raiden um, in the Defenders of the Realm which is Clancy Brown so of course I like it um, if this was based on movie Raiden played by Christopher Lambert it would be A tier because that's my favorite version of Raiden I just love him I, he's got there's so much personality Lambert brings just by being himself um, but Raiden as he is he's just he's good but he's not great Thor excellent Thor is one of my favorite if not my favorite Marvel characters of all time I just I, I mean I have like Germanic heritage so I, I am naturally drawn to a character of Germanic mythology um, like Thor but I just think Thor's really bonkers cool Thor is great like what more is there to say Cloud, now, hmm, okay, so, I'm just gonna leave him here for now, uh, Cloud is a character that I like, but I don't find him terribly interesting in the first game, I like the idea of what they did with him in Advent Children, but not the execution, and I don't really care about him in the remake, but, like, I don't care about anyone in the remake, apart from, like, Tifa and Barrett. Um, which I like it. You know, it's just Cloud in the remake that I'm not a fan of. Uh, I just think he's kind of dry. But... Uh... Good. Cloud's good character, but there's not much to him. Link is in the same boat, but he's going in meh, because at least Cloud has a consistent character. Link has no character. And that is the point of Link. But that doesn't mean I like him. Just because the point of a character is to be boring doesn't mean he's not boring, because that means he would have failed at the point. Batman... Batman's quite good. I really like Batman, but I'm a bit sick of him being pushed, but I think that's lessened a bit. I mean, there was the whole version who laughs thing, so maybe not, but I've noticed Batman less than I did, like, a couple years back. But I still think Batman's a bit overpushed. I think he's fine. I don't get the idea that he's more relatable than Superman, because, like... Superman's a guy that just is trying to do his best with little funding and he's got all these powers but those powers don't fix everything he can do like he's got a lot of talents but they can't fix all of his problems which I can relate to I have a lot of my own skills but they don't fix a lot of my problems and I always have to try my best and it doesn't always work out and I don't just have all this money to fall back on um, we'll talk about Superman in a moment Spider-Man is great. Um, Spider-Man is far more relatable than Batman, and he's just... <sighs> Spider-Man's awesome. Like, he's got... Pa he's strong, but not ridiculously cosmically overpowered. He's got a lot of relatable issues, like financial ones, and dealing with people, like balancing his work life and his um, casual life. Um, though he's got two work lives to sort of balance out, but one of them is more of like a hobby. Um, yeah, Spider-Man's great. Blanca, I... Eh, Blanca's good, but... Honestly, nah, Blanca's meh. No. He's between good and... I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in good, because... I like Blanca. But there's not much to him. <laughs> I, I, He's fun to play, and... Oh, I didn't, I didn't think I've actually played Blanca. Never mind. Um, His power set's cool. Pikachu! This is Ash's Pikachu, so it is actually a character... Uh, and Ash's Pikachu is quite a good character. I mean, it's not got, like, great arcs or anything, but it's very fun to watch. It's got a lot of those, like, little background moments and little details in the middle of episodes that, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you'll notice and you'll be like, oh, that's cute. That, that's kind of adorable. And I, I just find Pikachu very endearing as a character. Goku. Goku's great. Um, he gets, like, it, this, this is mostly Z Goku, like, or original Dragon Ball manga Goku. Who is a really great character, and he's a lot of fun, he's got a lot of personality, and I like him quite a lot. If this was Super Era Goku, he'd probably be around meh, so don't like, because he's so stupid now. Like, they've flanderized him a bit. But, I don't dislike Goku. I think Goku's quite good. I prefer Vegeta. Um, this isn't, this obviously isn't ordered, um, but, I mean, if it was ordered, right, so... It would probably go like that, and for this tier, my favorite would be. Hmm. 
probably be like that. Alright, uh, probably sweet. And then in good tier, my favorite of the goods would probably be Cloud and Raiden. No, one of them is better. I prefer one of them to Raiden. Cuba goes at the bottom. Sonic. I don't know where to put Sonic. Talkaka go there. Hag Zangi can go there. I probably prefer Sonic over Talkaka. That's probably about where I'd rank that. In terms of, like, most meh, is the Goomba, then Rogue, then Yoshi, and then these guys can go in any order, but I guess my favorite is Link. I prefer Zelda to Peach. So I guess that would be my rank if I was ordering this. Uh, Superman, S tier. I'm not putting in above Starscream. Um, I love Superman. Superman is my favorite Marvel DC character. Um, it's always hard to explain because like a lot of people think Superman is this really boring character, and most of them have never picked up a Superman comic. Um, I've always liked Superman. I've always found him quite relatable in a lot of ways. Um, I think the idea that someone having incredible superpowers not being relatable is rubbish. Um, like Spider Man could no could solo real life humanity if he wanted to, but <laughs> he's still relatable. Um, Superman is is great. Like I've always just found him. It, it, it it's hard to explain. I do have that personal connection, you know. Like he is the superhero that I probably looked up to the most growing up. Um, yeah, shocker. Doxing myself. I'm not older than Superman. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I like Superman quite a lot. And I don't know how to explain it, honestly. Yeah, I'm just putting... I'm, you know, screw it. He-Man, I don't know well enough to rank, I don't think. Same with Lion-O. And Bison is good. I prefer him to Zangief and Tao Kaka, but probably not as much as Sonic. Bison's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Shao Kahn. Now, Shao Kahn is difficult, because if it was original series Shao Kahn, probably, like, right here, like, right next to Akuma. If it's current Shao Kahn, straight into F. But because he's in the middle, because there's two, there's two versions, and they did composite the two, I'm honestly just the top of... Probably the top of meh. Because... It's right in between being good and being bad, and that's where I'd say. I never played Ninja Gaiden, never played Strider. Ivy. Now, Soul Calibur, you probably would not know this, is my favorite fighting game franchise. Um, just barely above Guilty Gear, um, which is my second favorite, obviously. Ivy... Ivy's never been my favorite. I think Ivy is a good character. Um... Nope. Probably around... Uh, eh, probably like there. Uh, I, I like Ivy quite a lot. But... That's mostly for gameplay. Um, in terms of a person, like... I like her gameplay, but as a character, I've never really cared about Ivy. But I do like Ivy, but I don't... She's not meh, but she's not very good. Um, Ivy, I feel, is a character they could do a lot with, and maybe they will in Soul Calibur 7, I don't know. Black Orchid, eh. Bucky, don't know. Fox, I've never actually played a Star Fox game, I'm not going to judge him based solely off Smash. Robocop, you get an excellent, because, I mean, you're not above Shang Tsung or anything, but I think, and you know what, Terminator, you can be up there too. I prefer you to Robocop, but, um, actually, considering... As a character, there's not much to Terminator, but if we go with two T T2 Terminator, he probably goes, like, around pretty high up, but... Those two... I love Robocop and the first two Terminator films. I'd like Terminator 3, mostly because of the ending. The ending sort of saves that film for me. Um, with Robocop, I don't like any of the sequels. Um, not many people do, though. But... I like Robocop and Terminator a lot, and that is the best I can explain it. Luigi is better Mario... Bam. <laughs> you know, I prefer Luigi to Shadow, actually. Luigi's just got so much personality to him. Um, he doesn't get to show it, the mo like, always. But um, you look to, like, the Luigi Mansion 
yeah, Luigi's Mansion games and, like, the RPGs. Luigi's got a ton of character. He's this lovable goofball who's always scared, but, you know, he's willing to go out there for his for his brother. He's risking, risking his life for his brother because he's a good person. He's just scared a lot. And Tails, I don't like as much. Mmm. Tails is... I wouldn't put him in very good, but probably above Talkaka. Tails is fine character, but I don't know. I've just never found myself terribly interested in Tails. Um, I, I do think it's weird that we have two characters between Tails and Sonic, because I probably do like Tails and Sonic around equal, but I guess Bison and Ivy, to me, are sort of in between them. I don't know. Now, the Pokemon is where this is going to get kind of difficult, because this is just based on... What is my favorite design? What is my favorite typing, I guess? Um, <sighs> Alright, so I really like Charizard and Blastoise and Venusaur. Actually, you know what? I, I think I like all the Kanto starters equally. I'm putting them at the bottom because they don't have any personalities. Um, I mean, they do have very clear-cut personalities in that Charizards are often more aggressive. Blastoises are often more reserved and that, but that's that's barely a personality. Um, they're in no specific order. I think they're all just sort of equal, um, which I know, you know, people who don't like Venusaur are going to be quite surprised, but I like Venusaur. I don't actually think there's anything wrong with Venusaur. It's the best design to me because it's the most original. Charizard's just a dragon. Blastoise is just a turtle with cannons. Venusaur is this weird frog dinosaur with like a flower blooming from his back. It's got a lot more uniqueness to it. Folgor, you remain and don't know. Sector, meh. Like, meh. Sector, never really cared about him in the original timeline. Don't like him in the current one. Gamera is going in S tier because I'm a big kaiju nut, and Gamera is my second favorite kaiju franchise of all time behind Godzilla. Um, yeah, I, bef I prefer Gamera to Pacific Rim. May is still based as hell, and May would definitely be an S tier if she was here, but uh, Gamera is... He is my favorite kaiju from the Gamera franchise. Just above Iris, who's just above Legion, who is just above... I want to say Guiron, just because Guiron's so stupid, but those are my three favorites, and Gamera's at the top. Um, and you know what? Let's get out of the way. Godzilla, you're an S tier. Godzilla is my second favorite character of all time. <laughs> He's not... I, it's weird. Um, I would probably rank most Godzillas up in S tier just because I like all of them. Like, Showa, like, 1954 Godzilla is a very tragic character, and I really did feel some of the end of that film for that kaiju. Showa Godzilla is very goofy, but very fun. Heisei Godzilla, I also actually really felt something for him. He, he felt like a character in the Heisei era to me. 2000 Godzilla is... He's quite tragic still, and he does have a very clear-cut personality. He's got clear motivations, and that's just a personal vendetta. Mega Gyrus Godzilla has not got much, admittedly. GMK Godzilla is one of the best. Um, the, the allegory there is very thick, but very good. Kiryu Saga Godzilla is a little bit overshadowed by Kiryu itself in that saga, but he's still fine. Final Wars Godzilla is awesome. Like, he's just the most what people think of when they think of Godzilla is Final Wars. Like, even more than MonsterVerse, Final Wars is what they think of. An unstoppable behemoth who barrels through everything and is just ludicrously overpowered. MonsterVerse Godzilla is still great. Um, Shin Godzilla is great. Um, Godzilla Earth is really cool power-wise, but it doesn't have any personality. It doesn't have much presence to me, despite how big it is. Um, I, I think it's, it would have been really cool if the books were made into the films, and, like, that's how we got to know Godzilla, as this unstoppable behemoth, the most powerful of the kaiju they've encountered. Um, and I haven't gone to watch Singular Point yet, so I can't comment on that version, but Godzilla, great, love him. Captain America, now, this is a case where I don't give a shit about comic cap, but I really like MCU cap, but they did focus on the comics, so... Comic cap's good probably there um but i don't really and i just don't care much for comic book cap but he is good um <sighs> okay so tommy and zex are separate from their mechs which is going to be difficult to 
So Zex, I'm going to put in Don't Know because I haven't actually finished Gundam Wing. I'm going to wait. I, I, I would rather wait till finishing Gundam Wing to actually rank Zex himself. I have not watched much of Power Rangers at all, so I can't really rank Tommy much. But I would put him at the bottom of very good because Tommy is he's got a lot of personality from what I have seen and from what I have watched of Power Rangers he's got a lot of character and he is very charismatic but he's at the bottom because I know him the least as for the mechs themselves Epion is an excellent design I legitimately love it it's one of my favorite gun designs and the white tiger zord it's also excellent I love the the idea I think it looks great I prefer the Epion look but they're both great um they're at the bottom though because obviously they don't have characters Ryu certain people's character of a certain c word that ends with t which i know coming from australians you're going to think of something else but this has five letters in between those two as opposed to two um ryu is good probably around here um which is very high into good but the thing with ryu is that a lot of it comes from akuma this guy is doing all the work for ryu who does himself doesn't have much beyond the Dark Hardo stuff, which I think is why he gets up into good. Scorpion, <laughs> going up right there. Um, even, in, like, Scorpion's the case where in both timelines, he's excellent. He's He was done great in both. And he is definitely one of my favorite Mortal Kombat characters. Um, I think Shang Tsung is one of the few that will actually out-muscle him in terms of how much I like him. So, yeah, Scorpion's good. Deadpool is weird. Um... I do really like Deadpool in a lot of ways. Uh, good job, Red. You've, you've made him outside the bubble. I like that. But the thing with Deadpool is I don't really care much. See, I think Deadpool gets a bad rap, but the problem is that that bad rap eventually turned accurate. See, because Deadpool is a serious character, but then everyone just saw him as a dumb, goofy gag joke, haha, one trick pony. But then that's exactly what he became eventually um <laughs> i still like deadpool i'm gonna i'm gonna put him I'm gonna just around there i still really like deadpool deathstroke you know i prefer deathstroke to deadpool now um he, he gets up in the same league i love deathstroke um and then i really don't have much to say now boo is a weird one i really like innocent boo and good boo i don't like evil boo and super boo and I am very mixed on Kid Boo. Um, obviously, it was overall Margin Boo or Innocent Boo that they were using. Um, because, like, one of the things I liked about Boo is that in context, he was very different to a lot of the villains. I actually looked with the Z, um, Z Saga had a great collection of villains because you had Vegeta, who had a good character arc, Frieza, who was just insidiously evil, and that was great, Cell, who was great for Gohan but wasn't much on his own. And Boo, who was very different because he wasn't outright cruel or anything. Um, he was just, like, a stupid kid. So, Boo, I think you're good. Yeah, Boo's good. I like Boo quite a lot. Kirby is going in the bottom of... Not quite bottom, but, like... He's going in, in A tier. And a lot of that comes from the fact that Who Ann's my best mate and Who Ann's favorite thing is Kirby. Um, but I do legitimately find a lot of the Kirby games a lot of fun, and he has a lot of personality, despite not really getting to do much as, like, a character. But the way he, like, acts, the little mannerisms given off by his voice actress, it's all got a lot of character to it, and I quite like that. No one in F tier so far, which is great. Ragnar is going right there, right around Cloud Deer, because I like Ragnar, um, but... I think it's mostly the design, the playstyle, and just those moments where he gets to be a massive asshole. A lot of people think Ragnar's an edgelord, which I find really funny, because he's not that at all. But I, I, I think Ragnar's... He's a lot of... He's a lot entertaining. He's, he's, he's very entertaining. But I didn't really care about his character much. Soul, on the other hand... <laughs> How do like how do I compare Soul, Eggman, Spider Man, and Luke? That's difficult, but Soul is just m probably my favorite fighting game protagonist. It's between him and Siegfried from Soul Calibur. Um, but Soul, I love I love Soul so much. He's so charismatic. He's got a lot of personality. 
His playstyle's great, his power set's cool, he gets to do a lot of stuff in the story, because it is his story, and he just, I don't think, I don't remember him developing much, but I just like seeing him interact with all the characters like Kai and Ramblethal and stuff. Gara is one of my preferred Naruto characters. Um, probably there. Um, I didn't go too far into Shippuden. Um, Shippuden I sort of experienced in bits and bops. Like I read the first few um, volumes and then I caught up with some of the later stuff. Like after pain and all that, and I got into the I got into the Madara stuff, and I, that's why I really like Madara. Um, he would get probably an S or an A on this tier list if he was here. Um, Madara is great, uh, and then I got to the ending, which with the Kaguya stuff, and I just like what the fuck. Um, but I did read all of Part One Naruto, and I thought Gara was really cool. Um, if I like stuck with Shippuden better, I probably or Part Two Naruto, I probably would have ranked Gara higher. Um, but the way I experienced Naruto as a series was really fucky. Uh, but I still really like Gara. I think he does have a good arc of becoming a better person. And I think I prefer the way the stuff with his tail beast... I, I think the Shikaku stuff with him was handled better than the Kurama stuff with Naruto. Because with Naruto, it's just... He's born, he's got this great power, but there's still this story about him needing to train for it. But then in the end, in a lot of part one at least... Like with the Neji fight, he literally just pulls this power out of his ass. And he sort of proves Neji's point about how, like, you, you know, some people are just born better. And Naruto essentially was just born better, because that's how he beats Neji. It's not with, like, his skill and training, but Kurama just gives him an extra power boost, and that takes that Neji. Like, Neji should have won if Kurama wasn't there. Toph is one of my favorite Aradar characters. I... Fuck, man. Where do you rank Toph? I gotta, I gotta rank her that high. Toph is just... When it comes to a character having a disability, I think Toph is one of my favorite examples of how to deal with it, where it is a thing, it's a part of her character, but it's not her entire character. Her character doesn't revolve around it. Not to say that it's wrong to have a character revolve around their disability, because I think you can do a lot of interesting stuff with that as well, but with Toph, the fact that she's blind is a part of her, but it's not what defines her. What defines Toph is her personality, not the fact that she's blind. That's just a part of her character. And I really like that. And her personality is a lot of fun. She's one of the most fun members of Team Aang, Team Avatar. I don't know what I don't know what they generally refer to, but she's one of my favorite characters amongst there. Obviously my favorite Earthbender. And I think Zuko's the only character from Avatar I might rank higher than Toph. Chuck Norris, real bloke. Sega de Sanchido. Look, the, the problem is that Sega de Sanchido was never meant to have a character. I was putting him in don't know. Guts? Probably above Gamma, honestly. Guts, um... He is one of my favorite manga protagonists of all time. I love the way he was handled. I think he's an excellent character with a lot of depth to him. And... He's one of the few times I really felt for a character just based on what they went through, as opposed to, like, like, obviously, I, I was really sad to see a lot of those characters die during the Eclipse, but I think what got to me most was the way Guts responded to it, and the fact that what this represented to Guts, it was, a, he's a person who never really got along with anyone, and when he finally did, the person he trusted the most ruined, ev broke everything, everything was fucked because of him, and I also really, I love the Berserker armor as a concept, the way that it is a massive, really overpowered boost, but it comes at this incredible cost to Guts and to his psyche. Guts is incredible, and it is a tragedy um, that Kentaro Miura, I don't know how that's, I hope that's how it's pronounced, um, passed away, and Berserk will never be finished. Obviously, the bigger tragedy there is the fact that he passed away, and the fact that he's he's gone, and, you know, obviously the, the worst, the most tragic part about anyone dying is the fact that they're gone now, and they'll never come back, but, um, obviously there is also the fact that Berserk will never be completed, um, I don't want anyone to take Miura's work and make it their own, I don't want that, um, if he had, like, a, I don't know what you call it for a manga, but, like, a, the equivalent of a production bible for a manga, like, write, write down of his ideas of what was going to happen, that would have been 
that being released would be fine. I'd be fine with that so we know what was intended to happen. But I don't want someone to take that and make something their own based on Kintaro's work. But Guts is a great character, and I will always consider him one of my favorites. Now, Nightmare... Nightmare is one of my favorite video game antagonists, so obviously he's competing with uh, Kuma and Shang Tsung. So the thing with Nightmare is that it's mostly Soul Calibur 4 Nightmare, who is the one that is his own character, and in that regard, he's going down here. Because while I do think he carries a lot of a presence and a lot of impact just by being there, as a character, he's not as interesting as he is when he is Siegfried, and he gets to have that inner conflict. Iron Man. Um. Iron Man's going right there. Now, between Iron Man and Thor, I don't know who I would prefer, but I do really like Iron Man, and I'm not even going to sugarcoat. A lot of that's from the MCU. But then, from what I have read from the comics, he's also really cool in the comics. So, it's a win-win. It's just, he's really cool all around, and he's a great character. Lex. Yeah, Lex Luthor, I can't, I gotta put him probably below Kirby, just because I've enjoyed more Kirby things than Lex things. But Lex is like a quintessential DC villain. He's one of my favorite DC villains. He's just, he's great, and he is a very layered character, and... I don't think I've ever not... In, I think, aside from in the DCEU, I've enjoyed every version of Lex. I like Lex in the comics. I like them in Smallville. I like him in the CW. I like him in the original films. Both the Gene Roddenberry, I think... No, that's that's a Star Trek guy. Kevin Spacey's version... Gene Hackman, I think that was it. Gene Hackman played him in the original two films. Um, and I think... Or the original four films, actually. And I, I like that version as well. Um, I like him in the animated stuff. I just like Lex all around, aside from in the DCEU, played by Jesse Eisenberg, because that was poo-poo. Um, but yeah. Great. Great character, Lex is. Beast? I like Beast. I think I put him in, like, the lower end of good. Um, of lower end of very good, because I, I do like Beast quite a bit, but, you know, I just, I just sort of, I think he's cool. Goliath, I don't know well enough. Sam Fisher, I don't know well enough. Snake? I'm going to put him in Don't Know, because while I have played some Metal Gear games, I've never finished any of them, and I want to be able to, like, experience the whole Metal Gear story before I rate Salt Snake. Darth Vader is my favorite antagonist of all time. Um, there are a lot that I consider in the same, like, around the same league that I love as well. Um, but the thing with Darth Vader is that he was the villain that I liked the most growing up, right? Uh, he's that villain from the Star Wars films. And while I don't particularly care about Anakin in the prequels, <laughs> the fact that he is the same character as Anakin from Star Wars, the Clone Wars, the show... <laughs> I mean, I love that version of Anakin. I think that version of Anakin's fucking great. And I still like the way Anakin was done in Revenge of the Sith. Not entirely. I think that the writing is a bit slipshot in a lot of ways, but I still like Revenge of the Sith Anakin. Um... To an extent. It's mostly just Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace. I don't really like Anakin. But Darth Vader is a character I've always really liked. And of his three popular matchups, those being um, Artoria, Obito, and Mirak, I think is how it's pronounced from Skyrim. Um, I think they're all really good matchups. And I would not complain about any of them happening. Doctor Doom. Right there. Is, um... <laughs> God, the fact that I put Eggman above Doom, that feels weird to me, but it is just the fact that I... Uh, you know what? Eggman, Soul, and Doom, they're very interchangeable to me. Same with Spider-Man, honestly. Um, Doom's, like, one of my favorite Marvel villains. He's just He just brings so much to the table by being there. He's He's got so many just moments in the comics that are quotable. I don't remember any of them, because I'm not a very good person at remembering quotes but there are tons of times i see doom just say something and it's just like oh that's it that is the quote that's fucking cool doom's just sold me on this entire entire page by saying one line and that's doom doom is just great he's got so much personality unfortunately he got shafted in all three of his live action versions donkey kong um 
Mm, there. I really like Donkey Kong just because... Look at that face. He, he, there's so much personality just the way Donkey Kong acts and just seeing him move around and do his thing and play the bongo drums and that. It gives him a lot of a lot of spark, a lot of life to his character that I wish Mario had, for instance. Donkey Kong, I mean, Mario does, but Donkey Kong has it better. I just like Donkey Kong more. And also, I guess I prefer gorillas to people because gorillas are the best. Knuckles the Inquada. Um... Where do I put Knox? Uh, if... Probably, honestly, Knuckles, you're around Sonic tier. You're not my favorite Sonic character. I do like Knuckles quite a bit, but he's not my favorite. I pro I rank him around Sonic, yeah, honestly. Yeah. My opinion changes a lot, so this is probably going to change by the time I actually upload the video. Raiden from Metal Gear, same as Snake. I want to get to rank you later. Wolverine. And this is this is this one is I gotta admit almost entirely from the Hugh Jackman Wolverine. He would be here if it went for Logan, but because of Logan, he's gone right there, right with Doctor Doom. I just think Wolverine's great, <laughs> and I don't know how to explain it. Danabiki, he is one of my favorite Street Fighter characters, so it's gone right there. Nah, there. Um, just because that's talked about before Nightmare. Dan is such a loser, such a limp dick, such a gibbon, that I love him. <laughs> and I think, like, if Dan was this super competent, out of brutal badass, he would not be anywhere near as lovable. What makes Dan lovable to me is the fact that he sucks at everything he does, but <laughs> it's just so fun. And you know what, Hercule, you... Oh, Hercule, you, you get to be right up here with Dan as well. You have the same thing going on, but Hercule, you have more charisma in the way you... Talk, Dan has more charisma to me in the way he acts. I don't know which I prefer amongst them. I think they're both amazing. I love them both. Tifa. You are one of my more like Final Fantasy VII characters. Um, prefer you over Samus. I like Tifa. And that's it. I just like her. Now, Yang. In context, this was just Volume 1 and 2 Yang, right? So I'm not going to rate this based on what Yang came after, because he's essentially a completely unrelated character after Volume 3. And based on that, Yang, you get to be, like, up here. I do prefer Volume 1 to Yang to Tifa. Just, she's great. She's so, so, so fun, the character. And, you know, Tifa is that too, but I just prefer Yang. But, I mean, if this was Volume 5, I would Yang, F, but... She's not, so she gets there. Astro Boy, I don't know very well. Mega Man, mm, meh. Uh, you know what, you get higher up in a meh because I like your games more. You don't have much going on, but I do like you. Green Arrow, he's good but not great. Hawkeye, good but not great. Never done Digimon. Red has no personality, but he is cool as hell anyway. Bayonetta, I have not played Bayonetta 2, so I'm going to wait off on that. Now, Dante, <laughs> right up there. He's one of my favorite protagonists. Um, retroactively, after like the timeline was revealed, he actually ended up having a really cool arc where he's like this goofy, serious guy, and then you know his brother dies, and he loses a lot of that goofiness in the f when he gets to DMC1, and then when he kills his brother a second time, he ends up being really depressed and getting really serious in DMC2. But then in DMC4, retroactively, now he's, he's met Nero, and he knows there's more family. He gets a bit more of his old spark, and he fully returns to his classic self in DMC5. And I, I like that retroactively, he ends up having that really cool arc. And Dante's just... He exudes personality and charisma with everything he does. I fucking love Dante. He's one of my favorite video game protagonists. And he's also stupidly fun to play. So, yeah. Like, just seeing Dante when he tries out a new weapon tells you everything you need to know about him. He is not only just a really fun-loving, free-spirited guy, but he's also really arrogant. Bowser, you, my man, you get to be right here. Um, oh God, once again, Bowser above Doctor Doom. This feels weird to me. I'd say they're just all around the same. I prefer Bowser to Eggman, but Bowser is... The best Mario character. Bowser's just so, so great. He's got, just like a lot of um, other Nintendo characters I've ranked higher, he's got a lot of personality just from the way he acts and the way he does things. 
But also, he's just a, such a goofball. He's such a gibbon. He's useless, but I love that. Because <laughs> he keeps trying. It honestly makes him always more... Like, I root more for Bowser than Mario some... Ugh. Burp. I root for Bowser more than Mario sometimes, because he's just such a limp dick. In that he always fucks up. But I like it, and I root for him. But then, you know, he's doing bad shit, so I kind of stand down a bit. Now, Ganondorf... He's just like, Link levels of meh. But you know what, no. Because I prefer... You know, I'm going to put Ganondorf there. You know, I feel weird. Koopa Trooper, I don't prefer him to any of the characters in meh, but... Yeah, you know, i got to move Koopa Trooper down. I just don't feel right having him up there now. But, Ganondorf, you're cool, man. Probably cooler than Boba Fett and Zangief. But, I just never really cared much about Ganondorf. Never play Jack and Daxter. Do want to. Never play Ratchet and Clank. Do want to. Barry. Right around there. I quite like Barry. And that's all there is to say. Quicksilver. I like you. But not as much. Probably not even as much as like Green Arrow and Hawkeye. The Joker. Now, this is a difficult one. Because... Hmm... Probably around here, just because I do really like the Joker in his stories, and the way he goes off of Batman, but then there is a lot of pushing Joker nowadays, and I just, uh, I'm getting a bit sick of him, but I do still really like El Joker. More than Luther, but not by a whole lot. Sweet Tooth, never played Twisted Metal. Mewtwo is my favorite Pokemon, um, and a lot of this comes from the fact that the first ever voice role I ever auditioned for was uh, Mewtwo. Or well, the first edition that I ever did that I got was for Mewtwo in Battle Royale uh, by Crossover X. And for that reason, Mewtwo, I do have that personal connection with, and he does go in S tier. Um, I, I hope that's understandable. I also do really like Mewtwo in the first Pokemon movie, and the, the message that sends, and just his character. Even if... I do think it's a little silly that he's just going to wipe out the world, but I still like Mewtwo quite a bit. Carolina... Look, I do. I did like her in Red vs. Blue, probably more than Yang, probably more than Pikachu, but that's about it. And the, the meta is around Carolina's tier, not because of a character like Carolina, but because that sort of silent, brutal villain was quite effective, especially in the context of Red vs. Blue, where that hadn't really been a thing before now. There was Texas, but she was she had a lot of personality. The meta has no character because it's all focused on being a threatening villain. And I think it works out very well for him to have that and to work as an effective villain in a comedy series. He just works really well. Cammy White. Eh. Eh. I like Cammy, but not much. And, you know, I like Sonya, but not much. I prefer Cammy. Scout. Never played TF2. Tracer. I only ever played Reaper one time in Overwatch. Ken Masters. Oh, man. You know, Ken's great. I, I, I really like Ken. I think just that sort of cocky attitude gives him a lot more spark than Ryu. Um, Ryu technically has more, like, character in terms of development, but I still really... I prefer Ken. Ken's a lot more fun to watch and a lot more interesting to see develop. And I just like that more. Because, um, like, the problem with Ryu is that while he's got a better arc, I don't find myself super invested in Ryu, but I do find myself invested in seeing what Ken does. Terry Bogart, now I've not played Fatal Fury, but do know that I am still tempted to put him in A tier, because he is excellent. Just, he has so much presence. But, I don't think it's fair to rate him without playing Fatal Fury. Amy... I... See, I would, I would want to make her the first F, but I don't dislike Amy. She's just like... A degree of meh. Never read Scott Pilgrim. Doomsday. Look, Doomsday. Uh, Doomsday is awesome. But I think just like top of B tier awesome. He's not quite breaking an A tier. Um, because I do think Luther's better. Just because he's got a character. But Doomsday is like the perfect version of what the meta's going for. Um, I guess, you know, Nightmare is sort of that too. But Nightmare has a character. Um, and the Terminator has that too, but he's in Asia because of TF2. Um, but that sort of silent, brutal, just all fuck you villain, I think Doomsday is one of the best examples of that you can have. The Hulk, uh, you get A tier as well. Probably better than Doomsday, actually. 
Because the Hulk's just... Hulk's awesome. And that's all there is to say, really. Urza is one of my favorite characters from Fairy Tale. But where would I rank her? Um... Probably around there. I think I like Toph more, but Urza is... She's one of the few characters of Fairy Tale who, like, has a tangible arc and, like, tangible development across multiple stories. Um, she doesn't just have a single arc. Like, so, like, Lucy is a character who mostly only has one arc across the story, but Urza's one who has multiple arcs, like, multiple character arcs in multiple story arcs, and that gives her a higher degree of character to me. Um, the other characters in Fairy Tale with that are Laxus, Gargiel, and Grey, and they're all my favorite characters. Um, Jalal's the other one, and he's the one that, he, you know, Jalal has that too to an extent, but, like, lesser. But Urza is one of my favorite characters. I never read One Piece, so I can't rank Rowan or Zoro. Pinkie Pie, you go down there too. Lara, don't really care about Lara, honestly. Never played more than a couple Tomb Raider games, and I just don't think I know her well enough. Nathan Drake. Now, Nathan is awesome. <laughs> um... Oh, where do I rank? Like, Nathan feels like... Like a video game version of Joseph Joestars, honestly, at times. But, um... Nathan, you you get to be right... Uh, here. Nathan, he doesn't develop a whole lot. But he's just so fun. Playing as him and hearing those quips and hearing him go on and on about the situation and just the way he talks... He brings a lot just with his presence, and not in the same way as a villain, but just as a hero. I like Nathan a lot. Scrooge, I don't know her well enough. Shovel Knight, never played. Bane, don't give a shit about Bane. Venom, Venom I quite like, but, like, that? Uh, do I prefer Venom over Chun-Li? I don't know. Probably just because I'd put Jury around. No, I'd put Jury in A if he was here. Now, okay, so Power Rangers and Voltron. I don't think I can really say much. Because, like, the thing with Tommy, the reason I've actually put him on here is because, from what I've seen, I did really like him. But I have no opinion on any of the Rangers or any of the Voltron Force. But as for the mech designs, Megazord... Um... <laughs> So, with these, they're all based on design. Megazord has one of my favorite all-time mecha designs, and Voltron is here. I prefer the look of Epion, but Megazord is just a whole other tier. It's a... The, the Daisyusian design is so good. So good. Ace, never read. Natsu... Now, Natsu is weird, because... He's a protagonist that I don't like or dislike. He's just sort of middling to me. So, I'm going to put him at the bottom of very good, because... I think what what puts him above just good or meh is at the end of the Tartarus arc when he actually sees Igneal again. I felt something. Like, I actually felt something in the... Like, the Tartarus arc has a lot of moments that actually made me feel something for the characters. Um, which is why it's probably my favorite arc in Fairy Tale. But Natsu, I thought his arc was just... His arc, he doesn't have much of a character arc, but that moment with Igneal sold me on the character probably. So, yeah. Glacius, go down there. Now, Sub-Zero, because this is Kwai Liang and not Bihan, I can actually give him a decent ranking, and that ranking is going to be right here. Not quite Scorpion tier, but I still really like Kwai Liang as a character. Um, I just wish he got to do more in the current timeline, but he's still good. 18, like... <sighs> Good, but not great. Captain Marvel. I'm going to put Captain Marvel in Don't Know, because I only know Captain Marvel from the MCU, in which case she'd be right here. But I think it's not fair to base her solely on that portrayal. Honestly, so I can't say I don't like her. Metal Sonic. Um, look, Metal Sonic's cool. But that's it. That's really all he is. Zero. Now, Zero is the character that got me into platformers. I was I never grew up on platformers. I grew up on RPGs. But Mega Man X is the series that really caught my attention amongst platformers. And Mega Man Zero was the first series I actually played through entirely. 
And throughout that series, I always thought Zero was the best character. I love Zero, like just the way he conducts himself, but also that whole story about he's not the real Zero in body, but in spirit he is, because he's the mind, the soul of Zero. And that sort of mind-body dichotomy, what makes you who you are? Is it your body or your soul? And is the soul a thing outside of the body? And Zero just does it really well, and I just like Zero a lot, the way he handles it, and his, his personality, his character. And of course, playing as him is a lot of fun. I love the gameplay of the Zero series. Lucario is one of my favorite Pokemon, but a lot of that comes from Smash. So, I uh, Fucking... Bottom of A tier. Because a lot of it is just Smash Bros. <laughs> Never Digimon. Balrog is uh, super low meh. He's fine. But he's just meh. And then TJ combos here. Now the Shredder is interesting. But I have to put him in Don't Know. Because the versions... Like, the version of Shredder I'm most used to is the 2003 version Shirelle and the 1987 Uncle Phil. Um, and they're both great versions of the Shredder, but obviously that's just two out of a bunch of versions of the Shredder. And especially in Death Bell, they focus a lot on the 2012 Shredder, who I don't know very well. Silver Samurai, I, I can't say I know very well either. Um, yeah. Or McGruff, or Smokey. Never watched or read Bleach. Naruto is bottom of good. I think Naruto is good, but he's not one of my preferred characters in that series. Terry McGinnis, don't know very well, honestly. Miguel O'Hara, hmm, I quite like Miguel, so I'm going to put him around Venom tier. But I don't know him terribly well, I just, from what I have seen, I really like Miguel. Dun, 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 dun. Now, Sephiroth, you can go in that same, like, in the middle of these five... Like, these five characters are so hard to rank for me, but Sephiroth is just one of those villains that brings a lot by existing. I also just love his voice, and, like, the his voice is great, and he is a very intimidating presence. Honestly, he's probably the DLC character for Smash, and I was hyped for the most. Terry was is a very close second. But Sephiroth just is a great... You know what, Virgil? Virgil, you, you man, you get to be... Not at the same tier, but... Ah, it's hard between Virgil and Akuma, but I love both of them. Virgil, he's fucking great. Um, I love both of these characters so much. I, I, I really love everyone in Excellent, aside from like the ones that are just based on their designs. But yeah, Virgil has to be up in, in a higher tier. He's, he's great. Black Panther... Look, Black Panther, he's really cool, but I don't really know my, enough to say above that. Raven, you know, you're in the same. I wish I knew Raven better, but I don't. Twilight goes there. Now, Jotaro... I'm, I'm going to get flack for this. I don't like Jotaro, but this is exclusively part three. I have not watched past part three. Um, if this was like part four, I'm sure I would put Jotaro in good and very good. Because for the most part, I do hear a lot of JoJo's fans tell me that Jotaro is not very good in part three, but he's really good past part three. So, you know, actually, you know, it's not fair. I don't think it's fair to ra to rate Jotaro based on just that. I feel like there's a lot about Jotaro that I'll get to know the more I watch JoJo's. But for now, I don't like Jotaro. Kenshiro. Kenshiro is... Yeah, Kenshiro is, like, the one shonen... The one manga protagonist I can think of that I prefer to Guts. Kenshiro, he... How do I explain it? Kenshiro is, like, what I consider the manliest character. Not because he is just super macho and all that shit, like an Arnold Schwarzenegger, but because he's openly shown his feelings, and he's not always, like, he is willing to admit when he's sad. He's willing to cry. He's willing to, to accept that he is suffering emotions, and he's suffering sadness. It's not just all about being serious and kicking ass and shit. There's more to Kenshiro than that. And I love Kenshiro because of that. Kenshiro is great. Kenshiro is great. Yeah. Never played Crash Game. Spyro I can only rank from Skylanders, and that is not the Spyro they used. They used um, Legend Spyro. Never played Kid Icarus. Never played Kingdom Hearts. 
Never played Dead Rising. Never played Resident... Oh, I played Resident Evil, but not the one with Leon in it. Dr. Fate. Look, I know Dr. Fate, and I like Dr. Fate, but that's... It's just, like, low B, and Dr. Strange is, like, in the same boat, where, like, I know and I like them, but I don't really care a lot about them. I feel like I've... Dr. Fate, I prefer to Batman, and I prefer Dr. Strange to Dr. Fate, honestly. Or do I? Yeah, I've seen more stuff with Dr. Strange, I guess. Jin, Don't know well enough. Afro, don't. Samurai Jack, I don't know. Carnage, look. Carnage is cool, but he's just cool. Okay. So... I don't like Lucy. I've never liked Lucy. I've... Elf and Laser series that I actively didn't enjoy watching. I just... I had a very unpleasant time watching Elf and Laid. It just made me unhappy watching it. Um, and Lucy's a big part of it. I just find her so boring. I'm like, I don't care about her backstory and... Oh, she went through so much because I don't care about her character. Like, if Guts' backstory just began with the Eclipse, I wouldn't care. Because there's no connection to the character. So I don't care. That connection needs to be built for me to care about some tragic backstory, and Lucy didn't develop that for me. I don't want to put her there, but I have to. Amuro, I don't think I know well enough. Gundam, if we're, <laughs> once again, based solely on design... Megazord's the only one that beats out the Gundam in a design to me. Because the Daijujin is perfect. Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is my favorite character in fiction, so I have to rank him in S tier. Um, and yeah, this is even in light of the composite, because they used four versions mainly. IDW, which is the best written. G1, which is my personal favorite. The G1 cartoon specifically. The G1 comic, who's still quite good. And Devastation, which is a fun as hell game, and it's my third favorite Transformer game behind War and Fall. Um... Which is probably an opinion most people have, is those three are the best. Um, now, they're all great, and uh, there is not a... I think, a part, like, the, I don't really care about the one from War for Cybertron Trilogy, because, um, like, the voice performance is really bad to me, and it <laughs> he's, he's a fucking moron in that series, but the G1 cartoon is... It's not a great series, but Optimus, he always felt like like something to me. I, I don't know how to explain it, but Optimus is just... is He's that to me. I, I, I love Optimus. I think he's a great character. I, I've put three characters whose primary color is red on here, and that's funny to me. Um, you can almost argue Superman's primary color is... is Would almost be red, too, because he has a lot of it, but he's mostly blue. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Optimus, you, you get up there, man. You're great. Daredevil. Um, I only know Daredevil from the show. And I have not finished the show yet, so I'm, I'm going to put him in Don't Know. And I'm going to put Nightwing in the same tier. Don't Know well enough. Sigma, I also don't want to rank yet. Ultron? Look, Ultron is cool, but y y you see where I'm putting a lot of the Marvel DC characters that are cool, but not great. Um, honestly, this feels weird. You know, i, I got to reorganize a bit. So, I prefer Scorpion to these characters... Fuck, where did I rank Scorpion before? I don't remember. Anyway, Scorpion... Yeah, Wily. Spawn. Luigi. And Shadow can stay there. There's a bit of a gap between Luigi and Shadow now. Actually, no. I prefer Shadow to Ultron. And I prefer Deathstroke to Ultron. And I prefer Deadpool to and Kwai Liang to Ultron. Okay, Ultron, you get... Oop, you get to go... You're above the meta, though. Alright. <laughs> Jiraiya! He is one of my favorite from Naruto, and as such, I'm gonna put him at the bottom of A tier. I really like Jiraiya, and Roshi, you... man... You're approaching that tier, but I prefer Jiraiya, because he's got more going on as, like, a character, and he's a lot more entertaining. Roshi, the... the, the perverted jokes get a bit much with Roshi compared to Jiraiya, honestly. But I still really like Roshi. I like that idea of wisdom and stuff. And the fact that, in Super, he got by with having a much lower power level to a lot of characters just by his strategy and technique. Though they did also wank him a bit and give him that hand job to boost him. Darkseid? Darkseid is an excellent villain. 
um, just by his presence again. He's one of those villains who's not got a character, but he's got a lot of presence. And for that, yeah. And you know what, Thanos, you you can be in the same level, probably below Luther. Um, Thanos has the same thing going on, but I do prefer Darkseid in the end. Aquaman is one of my favorite DC characters, um, and you might be surprised to find I'm putting him right up there in with Iron Man and Thor. Look, I've always liked the ocean, and I like fish a lot, um, both to eat and just living on their own. I think fish are really fascinating creatures, and Aquaman just has that connection to me with that to make him like make me like him. But he's also just he's shot on so much, but he's so cool. Like, he is really strong, obviously. He's not strong and people give him credit for, but he's, like, got a trident shit. He's this wise king, but he's also a massive smartass. He's great. He's a lot of fun. Aquaman get, doesn't get enough love. And Namor, I eh, don't know you very well. Don't know EA, EXE or Geo or Volnut well enough. X, I know. I like X. Probably about, about, yeah, probably, probably around above the meta. Probably above Ultron too. I like X, but you know he was always a bit sidelined to me by the other guy. Black Widow, eh, I like her, but not much. Yeah, I just like her. Gonna make her? Don't know. Shazam. Now Shazam, I used to really not like, but now I like Shazam quite a lot. I think Shazam is very charismatic, and he's a very fun character, and I love watching him just be himself, and, um, I'm very glad the Shazam movie came out after I started to like him, as opposed to before that, so I could enjoy it. DDD, <laughs> hilariously, is right up there with Eggman and Bowser. I love DDD, he's one of my favorite villains in a video game series. He's just so fun, so goofy. I like Nintendo's villains are all the way up here, but then most of their protagonists aren't, like, they're down here, except Ganondorf. Poor Ganondorf, I just don't really care about him much. Wario, Wario, um, I wouldn't put him in A, but I prefer him to Donkey Kong. I think he's just got more of that personality exuding. Um, of course, in Smash, he's really gross, but he's just, I, I, I like him. Never seen Ben 10. Hal is a Chad Lord Supreme, and for that, he gets to be up with Virgil. Hal is great. Um, for like a lot of the same reasons as Aquaman, just without the fish stuff. I've always liked space, and Hal's got that going on, but the, I think the Lantern Ring is just a really cool weapon with so much versatility to it, and there's so many creative ways to come up with, like, uses for it to get out of a bad situation that I, I just love it. I love it. It's great. Mitsuru, don't know. Weiss? Um... Bam! Weiss is awesome. I love Weiss. Weiss is great. Great character. She is the best developed of her team, and while she didn't get to do a whole lot in Volume 7 and 8 when she should have, I still really liked her. Like, Weiss has been really annoying in the first few volumes, but she also had that arc of development where she got to develop as a character. And the fact that, unlike with any other member of Team Ruby, you can identify the exact moment things happen to go the way for her to develop. And she, you got to see every individual moment for her to develop into what she is now. You got to see her change, and I really like that. Captain Falcon! I don't know well enough. <laughs> I've never played an F-Zero game, or watched the anime. Johnny Cage! You are... Did I say Shang Tsung was my favorite Mortal Kombat character? If so, I'm sorry. He's my favorite villain. Johnny Cage is my favorite Mortal Kombat character. In both timelines. He's excellent. He's absolutely excellent. He's got good development, he's got good character. Love him in the first movie. Um, Lid and Ashby brought so much life to the character. And that sort of stayed. Even in MK11 and X and 9, where most of the characters lost a lot of their personalities beyond, like, single things, Johnny Cage remained a character that I always enjoyed watching and seeing him develop and change as a character. Especially in MKX. I think Johnny was great in that. That's the best part of MKX is Johnny Cage. Ang. Mmm. I like Ang. But I don't think he's stupidly great. But I do like Aang. I always thought he was a cool protagonist. And he's just... He's a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun, Aang is. But he's not my favourite of his group. He's actually one of my lesser favourites. Edward, haven't watched Fullmetal Alchemist. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider I really like. 
And that's all there is to say. Lobo, I also really like. Less than Ryder, but I still really like Lobo. Now, um, when looking at designs, Dragon Zord is on the lower end to me. I, <sighs> yeah, it's the it's my least favorite. Look, I do like the Dragon Zord's design, but that blocky look ends up looking to to its hindrance because I just think the fact that the head can't move really bothers me. As for the battle mode, I mean, the Tiger Zord battle mode is just way cooler to me. <laughs> it doesn't look like it's got a giant diaper on. Now, okay, so Kiryu has got a defined personality, and Kiryu is one of my favorite Godzilla Kaiju. Like, it's top 10. I, I think it's great. Um, the way it's the character of the original Godzilla is shown every now and again, and the fact that I love the 1954 Godzilla's character, the tragedy of it. The fact that when he first takes over Kiryu's body and he goes on a rampage, it's almost like he's screaming in pain and being reawoken. He hates it. He wanted, he got his chance to finally rest after his death from the Oxygen Destroyer, and that's been ruined. And, yeah, Kiryu's great. And, you know, Akane Yashiro is my favorite character in any Godzilla film that isn't a kaiju. Yeah, Akane is amazing. She's got so much development, and the, the, working over her grief and her trauma and all that, I think that was great to see. I think she's the best character in a Godzilla film by far. Hiei! Haven't watched enough Yu Yu. Need to get back to it. Sasuke! I've sort of warmed to Sasuke a bit, but he's still just in the lower levels of meh. Dracula! Haven't played enough Castlevania. Mob! Bam! <laughs> Um, what is there, what is, what else is there to say? Mob is, one is amazing at writing protagonists, and Mob is the second best example of that behind Saitama. Even then, I completely get that some people prefer Mob to Saitama. I understand entirely. Mob is great. Sh Shigeo is a great character. Tatsumaki is not, but she is a good character. I think she gets too much hate, and I'm going to put her on the lower end of A, but I still really like Tatsumaki. I like how she's developed in the like the manga and stuff. Tatsumaki's good, and people give her too much shit. The mask? I'm not gonna rate the comic mask based on just the film. All Might. Now All Might's excellent. He's one of the best characters in Hiroaka, and for that. Oh fuck, All Might or Spider-Man. Um I'm gonna put him below, but it's hard because All Might's great. He he's got so much charisma. So much character. He brings so much with every... Like, every scene, he steals completely. Yeah. He, he, it's great. My guy, I do not like as much, but I still really like him. Less than Jiraiya, but I still really like my guy. For, like, a lot of the same reasons, just he's a little bit lesser. Now, Miles... I never used to like Miles, but then, you know, Spider-Verse happened, and the Miles Morales game happened, and now... I consider him just as good, well, a bit less, but almost just as good as Peter. Miles is an excellent character. I, I really like Miles. I didn't, I don't know Static very well. Black Canary, I don't know enough. Sindel, um... Sindel is going with Shao Kahn in that she used to be great and now she's not. I don't know where to rank her. Genos is sort of middling, um, he, he's going with his fellow similar characters, Cloud and Ragnar. He just doesn't do a whole lot to really make me invested in him, but he is still cool. I still like him. War Machine, however, is on the lower end of A. I mean, I prefer Beast to him, but I prefer him over Natsu, so, you know, I just like War Machine. Esdeath is one of those villains who carries a lot of presence just by being there, which I think would put her around meta level. Yeah, I'm going to put her down in B. Um, I want to rank her higher. But the thing is, as a character, Esdeath is not much. And I have to weigh up. Does her presence beat out meta? Yeah, it does. I think she's got a lot more presence. Does it beat out Doomsday? <laughs> no. Does it beat out Darkseid and Thanos? No. So, unfortunately, she's down there. And like, Ultron, I think, carries more of a presence to him as well. So, Esdeath, as much as I do like her as a villain, I think she's a really good villain. I, I can't put her, like, up in this tier with all these characters. Grey, however, Grey is... Like, he's competing with Urza for... And, for, like, second favorite character in Fairy Tale. Gajul's my favorite. 
Um, those two are fighting with Larxus for second favorite. Um, Gray is an excellent character. I think he's got like more. De he's got more development than pretty much everyone in Fairy Tale, including Garziel. And I really like that. And just seeing him change over time, and how the fact that his backstory is actually relevant to his character and his development, which is the case with everyone in Fairy, like all main fairy tale characters but with gray there's more to it than just one primary moment there's like a bunch of moments where with leon with ultia with silver where he has to confront his past and deal with it and he he gets better with it every time and i like that quite a lot goro i don't like goro i i i don't like goro because in the original timeline he's just fine but then in the current timeline, Goro is such a loser. In the in the comic, he's a loser. In the games, he's a loser. In Scorpion's Revenge, he gets fucking just killed from behind, I think. Um, I hear he doesn't do a whole lot in the new movie either. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. But <laughs> fuck, Goro is so lame now. And it's not like with Shao Kahn and Sindel, where in the original timeline, I liked them. Or like with Sector, where he's just sort of ineptly lame, as opposed to completely lame. Goro just sucks. Machamp, meanwhile, I mean, you, you're you like Pokemon. You're like above the starters. I, I prefer you to the starters. Machamp's great, but there's not much to say about him. Boosterific! And where do I put Booster Gold on, ironically? Probably around... How tier? Unironically, I do really like Booster Gold, but I mean, if I'm memeing, he's like up there. But unironically, while Booster, I do really like you. I just prefer these characters to Booster, but I still think Booster's a really good character. Cable, you <sighs> meh. Cable's cool, but that's about it. Kakashi. Up here, you're even above Jiraiya. You are amazing. You know what? Kakashi goes up there. Kakashi's great. And Obi-Wan, I actually prefer Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan is like right up here with Aquaman, Iron Man, and Thor. Obi-Wan's amazing. He's like my second favorite Star Wars character behind, you know, Anakin. Obi-Wan's just fun. Never watched Danny Phantom. Never watched Jake Lung. Don't care about She-Ra. Beerus is my... Uh, one of the two characters rivals Vegeta. Oh, I probably prefer Beerus, honestly, to Vegeta. Beerus is just such an interesting character, and there's not really a whole lot to me to say. Everything good about Beerus has been said a lot, and that's just everything about him. Galaxia, never watched. Todoroki, he is a good character in Hiroaka, but he's always been kind of flat to me, so I put him... Like, around... Kwai Liang tier. I, I do like Todoroki, but it's not excellent. Zuko, however... Um... Yeah, I mean... Now, I feel Weiss is almost too high up. I'm, I'm gonna move Weiss down here, just because these villains, I just pref And Soul. I prefer way over Weiss, and I prefer... Yeah. Yeah, that that's probably a bit better for Weiss. Um uh, There we go. <laughs> um I I'm tempted to move her down further, but I don't want to. I'm not gonna move her down further. But I still really like Weiss, but these characters I just definitely prefer over her. This tier feels more fitting for her, but Dan and Hercule, I'm I'm gonna move Dan and Hercule. You know what? No, I'm gonna keep him keep him No, I'm gonna move him up above above Ken. Or around the same tier as Ken. Anyway, Zuko, best developed character in Atla. I really enjoyed seeing him change over time. Dante Basco does an incredible job with the voice. Um, a lot of these are saying the same thing, but Zuko, he struck a chord to me. I loved his his arc. Archie Sonic, never read an Archie comic. Wally West, um... Where's Barry? Yeah, around Barry to you. Now, some of the boys is the TV show versions. Um, which means I can rank them. Billy Butcher is a lot of fun, but probably just around the high end of B. Um, as much as I like Billy, um, I need to watch season two of The Boys, honestly. Billy's just good. A-Train, 
I don't like A-Train, honestly. I just don't find him much fun compared to a lot of the other characters in The Boys. Yeah, I can't even put A-Train in and don't like. I think it's just more like the low, lowest end of meh. New lowest end of meh. Homelander is getting up around this tier because he's another case where just he shows up and all my attention is on Homelander. The actor does a great job. The writing is amazing. Everything's on Homelander. Queen Maeve is above A-Train in meh, but still meh. Starlight is even lower than A-Train in meh. And the Deep, honestly, Deep's good. I actually liked seeing him and seeing him get his comeuppance. Um, and s the stuff with Deep outside of the Seven I thought was kind of cool, seeing him suffer. That makes me sound cruel. I'm, I'm going to put him in the top tier of meh. Then above the others in meh. Red Hood. Uh, low end of excellent. Red Hood's excellent. And Winter Soldier, you're also the low end of excellent. And Krona, you are in the middle of excellent somewhere. Krona is an amazing character. Prefer Krona to Weiss. Prefer Krona to Ken and Urza and Nathan. I think that's a good place for Krona. Krona is an amazing character. Krona's great. I'm so glad our first Soul Leader rep was someone as cool as Krona. Um, now, these are characters who have not been on Death Battle yet. I'll talk about them later. Um, John Talbane. Never played Darkstalkers. Sabolf. Never played. Now, with the, re with the Reds and Blues, Caboose is a lot of fun. But it hasn't much got, hasn't, he hasn't got much character. Church is... Also, really good. I think I prefer Caboose, though. Sheila is just sort of good. She doesn't have much personality. Texas is great. She's probably actually my favorite of the blues, um, apart from Washington. And Tucker is my second favorite. Out of the reds, Donut is just sort of fine. But I don't actually care much about Donut. Griff? Yeah, Griff is great. I, I love Griff. Um, Lopez is... Yeah, Lopez is probably my favorite out of this bunch. Sarge is my second favorite out of this bunch. Texas is my third. And then Simmons is below Griff, but not by much. You know what? I prefer Tucker to Simmons. Yeah. I, it's weird Caboose is so low, but I do still really like Caboose. Batgirl, I'm going to put her in Don't Know. Same with spider Green. I just don't know them well enough to care. Rock Lee... A great narrator character, actually, like, right up there with my guy. I think Rockley would be higher if he wasn't so shafted in the series. Sanji, don't know. Broly is the other Dragon Ball character in this tier. Broly, you are in competition with Beerus. It's really hard to choose. Broly is a great character now. God, you know, a couple of years back, that would be the, such a stupid thing to say. Don't Kingdom Hearts. Yoda... <coughs> Yoda's good, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to put Yoda there. I really like Yoda, but I don't care much for Yoda compared to some of the other characters in this area. Yeah. Ryuko. Yeah, Ryuko's excellent. Ryuko's one of my favorite protagonists in an anime series. I just really like her. I like her arc. I like her story. I like her abilities. I like the, I like, just like her personality. You know, she's such an asshole. Don't know enough about Geese Ray Archie to comment. Blake. I don't like Blake. Now that she's gotten to volume 7 and 8, she feels so directionless, so characterless and soulless. I just... No. Blake can't deal with Blake. And Mikasa, I don't think I know enough to comment. I have not seen enough to comment on Mikasa. Same with Iron Fist. Poe. Poe is going right up there. I mean, I've explained in my review what, what Poe represents to me. Honestly. Yeah. 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 I'm going to be honest. Poe represents something very important to me as an individual. I have to have him that high. Yeah. And I don't know Star or Steven. Now, for the characters who have not been on Death Battle yet, Alucard... is excellent. He's amazing. 
Now, I don't actually like Dio much. <laughs> I hate saying it. So, part one Dio is a really good villain. I think he, the, his relationship with Jonathan isn't developed much at the start, but I felt that hatred they had. But then in part three, he just sort of sits around and does jack shit. Now, if this was part three Dio, he would go in don't like. If this was part one Dio, he would go in very good. So I'm just going to put him in good around there. Yeah, Dio's good, but the fact that he's like, my, my like for him changes so much between parts is honestly shocking. Ruby. I don't like Ruby. I like her more than Blake. No, I don't. Ruby's a really bad protagonist. I, I hate saying it. But if this was Volume 1 and 2, or Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, Ruby would be up and very good. Same with Blake. Uh, no, if Volume 1, 2, 3, Blake would be up probably in excellent, because she's the best developed character up to that point, but they just sort of drop off so hard for me lately. Marka and Soul. Marka is... Marka's really good, but I don't like her as much as some of the other characters in excellent. And Soul... I like Soul a lot more than Marka, honestly. Yeah, there's a big gap there. Galactus, um... Where'd I put him? No, I know I know Galactus. Galactus is the one villain I'd put above Darkseid and Thanos in that sort of tier, or that type of character. Yeah, Galactus is great. I probably prefer Galactus to Kirby and Nightmare. Probably not as much as the Barry, so Galactus is awesome. And Unicron, um... He's somewhere in S. Unicron was my introduction to, like cosmic scale villains and that's what makes him stick to me probably around around there yeah that unicron and zero you're honestly above two and yeah yeah actually unicron's just the bottom and mewtwo he means a lot to me for like what he was yeah so yeah unicron was introduction to cosmic scale villains and he is still my favorite of them but that's the best i can say so yeah that's my tier list. Wiz and Boomstick, you're going in real people because you really are just Ben Signature. I don't know where to rank Wiz and Boomstick. Um, but yeah, that's that's my tier list. It's all on screen for you now. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed... Uh, hope you guys enjoyed me rambling for two hours. Bye, have a good one. If you disagree, that's fine too. <laughs>